bag is kind of like a spouse. If you have the same one for too long, all the weight starts to settle to the bottom. Just kidding. It's reliable. It's always going to be there for you, but you only get out of it what you put into it. Also, no one wants to see videos of you in your heavy bag. If the heavy bag is like your spouse, I guess hitting mitts would be like a boyfriend or girlfriend. It, it's exciting, it's new, it pushes the pace, it keeps you sharp. But people only want to see videos of that, like, if you both look really good. <sighs> your sparring partner is like a one-night stand. Like, it's super exciting, you think you want to go do it, but you will immediately regret it, especially if you're used to a heavy bag or hitting pads. But the next day, you'll be thinking about it again. Everybody wants to see that, but you better talk with that person before you put that on the internet. When I say the heavy bag lies, or you can lie to yourself if you use the heavy bag, what I mean by that is you always hit it. Boom! Every time. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to try. It's going to let you hit it whenever you want. Ah! The problem with that is if you always land, you don't know what missing is like. So you actually should practice missing. I don't mean missing like, whoa, I messed up. You're gonna miss. A lot of punches miss. And if you always whoosh, bounce off the bag and feel like a then that's unrealistic. You need to have control so that when you do miss, you're able to pull your hands back. And not every shot has to be super hard on the bag. You know, sometimes you're touching and figuring out where he's at. Every once in a while, throw a hard one. But don't just expect to bounce off of something every time because not only will your punches be messed up, your balance will be messed up too. Like I'll throw a punch and it's more forgiving if I'm off balance and I bounce off the bag, that puts me back in alignment. Whereas if I were to miss and do this, I, I acutely feel that I'm not right and I need to pull myself back into balance and line the technique up. If, it, if you like short, tight uppercuts, they don't have to land because you don't, you're going to miss a lot of punches anyway. Boom, boom. That's still practice. And in a way, more realistic. Shadow boxing, if you haven't figured that one out, it should have been the first thing you learned how to do. And you should be really good at it by now. You can do it by yourself, almost anywhere. Nobody wants to see that unless you're famous. My thing broke. Maybe you can develop push, bone density and power on the heavy bag. It's great for that. But you can use it like a sparring partner. As long as you are honest with yourself, and honest with your heavy bag, right? That you keep a range that's more realistic. Jab your way in, throw your punch, right? Jab, jab, jab. And then move out. So now we're practicing footwork and range too. You can add in feints, jabbing just to set up range. If the bag is swinging and it swings right at you like that, we can also practice our timing and our distance management when they come at us. We're gonna treat it like an opponent since we don't have a sparring partner. If it comes at me and I do nothing, I'm a schmuck. That's the same as me getting rushed, beat up, taken down, whatever, which takedowns we'll talk about in a second. I can't just let that happen. I need to step out of the way, boom, step out of the way, or if I want it to stop, stop it with a strike. But if it's swinging excessively, you're probably not doing it right. If the bag is like really swinging around a lot, and you find yourself constantly chasing it, unless you intended for it to move and swing, you're probably not doing it right. So when you hit it, right, it should jump. And you should be in control of where it goes. So if we've got good control over it, we got control over ourselves, you know, our punches are tight, our range is right, we're in and out, we're treating this thing like a real fight with our movement and our strikes. We also need to work on our defense. The heavy work defense on a heavy bag. Visualization, dipshit. You imagine that the bad guy is punching at you. If you can't imagine a person hitting you, were you like ever a kid? Like, did you ever fight imaginary bad guys? So you have an imaginary bad guy. He's swinging, he's punching. You have to move, parry, block, maybe defend a takedown. You know, you're gonna have to sprawl. So we sprawl like this and then pop back up. And if you wanna practice shooting for takedowns off your punches, boom, boom, you know, you shoot. Make your takedown. Don't laugh at my shot. I'm sure I did it wrong. Wrestle nerds in the comments. Ah! But what I'm saying is you practice your shit. You should practice what you want to practice on your heavy bag. If you want to clinch, maybe you can't reach around. I got this big bulbous headed one here. 
Maybe you can't reach around it, but you can certainly put your hands on it. Treat it like an opponent. Simulate what the fight in your rule set is really like. But don't just limit yourself to standing in front of the bag, <laughs> wailing on it like a Neanderthal. Be imaginative, visualize, be realistic, be honest with yourself and with your, with your partner. Speed bag is like super hot, smoke show. Does nothing for you, does not improve your life in any way, super high maintenance, but you like taking them places to show them off in front of people. Double M bag, super cute. A lot of fun. You have a ton in common, but for whatever stupid reason, you guys never get serious about each other. Uppercut bag um, just does that one thing you like really well. Reflex bag is a freak, like really kinky. You're not really into it, but you put up with it, you know, so you can get some, but ultimately you're not satisfying to them. The thing that attaches to, that bounces off your head, that's like a person who collects beanie babies and doesn't have a car. Slip bag somebody you gave your number to and you don't know why. The mushroom bag is like super hot doctor or lawyer. You know when you know somebody that's dating like way out of their league and you're like, God, how do they do it? Do they know something I don't know? Yes, I know something you don't know. Grappling dummies are people with low self-esteem that should leave you but won't, so you can get away with pretty much anything. Wrecking ball bag, unattractive but treats you very well. The, you've relegated them to 3 a.m. booty call though. They're really good at giving... <laughs> <laughs>